on the agenda is the joint debate on 10 reports on the migration and asylum package as it is known. So we have the report by Ms. Sippel on screening of third country nationals at the external borders. The report also by Madam Sippel, European Criminal Records Information System, third country nationals. We also have the report by Ms. Keller on common procedure for international protection in the Union. Another report also by Ms. Keller on establishing a return border procedure and amending regulation 2021-1148. We also have the report by Mr. Tobe on asylum and migration management. The report by Mr. Lopez Aguilar addressing the addressing situations of crisis and force majeure in migration and asylum the report by mr bouja de villalba on the establishment of the eurodac system for comparison of fingerprints for the effective application of regulation number 604/2013 for identifying an illegally staying third country national or stateless person and on request for the comparison with Eurodac data by member states, law enforcement authorities, and Europol for law enforcement purposes. Now, we also have the report by Ms. Bjork, Union Resettlement Framework, and the report by Mr. Nemec, Standards for the Qualifications of Third Country Nationals or Stateless Persons as Beneficiaries of International Protection. To conclude, we have the report by Ms. Intvelt on Standards for the Reception of Applicants for International Protection. These are the 10 reports of the package the migration and asylum package that we'll be discussing this afternoon. I should like to begin by giving the floor to our rapporteurs, the first of which will be Ms. Birgit, Bir Birgit Sippel. The floor is yours, madam. Thank you very much. Colleagues, the European migration policies of past years, it, it's unsustainable there's a systematic violation of human rights on our borders, pushbacks which are not followed up, and a Dublin system that is not good for either the people seeking protection nor for the member states. So it's clear that Europe le needs, in this legislative period, a f finally an efficient and effective solution for migration and asylum, clear rules for control, solidarity, all of which based on our values of democracy, rule of law, and fundamental rights, including the right of asylum in Europe. And for that reason, this reform of the common, uh, common European asylum system, this is just a part of an overall migration policy. And at this right now, what we're missing is a stronger role for civil society and municipalities, cooperation with uh, third countries on an even basis and without outsourcing our responsibilities and not the least a further possibilities for legal entry into the EU in order to meet the increasing needs of our economy for labor. Only when we meet these challenges and address these challenges are we going to have sustainable future immigration in the interest of everyone. And so there's lots of work to do in the future years. Right now, however, we're addressing this specific package, which includes uh, proposals, which some of which have been concluded for eight years. And because of the blockade of member states, we had to wait this long for a uh, conclusion. That is really a shame. 
It's shameful. And the conditions in which the negotiations with the Council uh, took place, instead of having a loyal cooperation between the institutions as enshrined in the uh, treaty, there were a lot of refusals to compromise without clear arguments. So today we're not voting on a perfect package of legislation. It's not even a good, a very good um, package, and I'm not going to uh, be reticent with my criticize. We have to uh, in, this includes the deci decisions about uh, the indicating that third countries are safe. Uh, this is these are things that we could uh, particularly criticize in these terms. Also in my report for screening, we had to make concessions. For example, screening of persons who are already on the territory of the member state. Here there are really quite a lot of doubts as whether the existing legal basis actually allows such screening. But still in the package there are positive elements as well. In the screening there's important protection measures and uniform measures laid down which is a clear strengthening uh, uh, including an independent mechanism to monitor fundamental rights. And for the first time, there's going to be a solidarity in the cooperation of the member states. It's obligatory. This is a very important first step in um, sharing responsibility and ad addressing resettlement as well. Now, with these different texts and in this overall picture as well, this is very important for our decision. And that demonstrates after years of inertia in the Council, now finally it's possible to have an agreement on asylum reform. And then we can achieve throughout Europe that European law will be respected and that member states with qualified majority vote will actually implement what we've decided upon. And we expect from the Commission as the guardian of the treaty to live up to that role and then especially under Mrs. von der Leyen has uh, neglected this role or ignored it completely. So colleagues, now I'm going to conclude. Our efforts to have a progressive uh, policy that demonstrates solidarity, it doesn't end today. And there were some problems, the uh, deficiencies in legislation, so that's why one of our key jobs in the future uh, mandate will be to ensure that th these are implemented fairly and evenly throughout all member states, including the right to asylum. And then if that is if that is carried out, then this can also be a step in the right direction. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. Now I should like to give the floor to Rapporteur, Madame Fabienne Keller. Monsieur le Président. President, Commissioner, dear Ulva Johansson, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment of truth now. After three and a half years of complex and demanding work, and almost 10 years after the migratory crisis of Syrian refugees, we're now facing a crucial vote to finally reform the European asylum and migration system. This pact is a consistent whole, which takes finally into consideration the challenges we face for migration. There are four priorities here. First of all, to assure strategic steerage in policies between the 27 member states on asylum and migration, with a clear role for the Commission to coordinate and follow up. Secondly, a solidarity mechanism that is unprecedented at European level to help member states if they end up under pressure or migratory crisis. The third approach, to have better control on illegal immigration at the European borders with, thanks to accelerated border procedures at the border with those who obviously do not have the right to asylum. Finally, putting in place a more harmonised asylum procedure, more efficient within the European Union, along with flanking rights for families and children for everybody requesting asylum. These different legal instruments will allow the European Union to be better equipped to respond to the main challenges of immigration. This pact is not going to solve all problems, but it constitutes a step forward, a huge step forward, towards genuine control and good, humane management of m migration in France, in Europe and across our continent. 
This isn't the end of our journey either, however. We have to uh, undertake great efforts, as my colleague Birgit Zippel pointed out, to make sure rules are respected across the EU. With my Renew group, we'll be following up on this implementation with a close watching brief. And we count on the Commission Commissioner to play its full role as guardian of the treaties. We've already started working, by the way, on measures for families. Ladies and gentlemen, we have shouldered our responsibilities. If you vote against this pact, you're going to hand victory to the extreme right in Europe, who've done everything to stop results and solutions being found for uh, the challenges of migration. The Rassemblement National in France, for example, wouldn't be happy with these results. They feed into the problems with cynicism. Or voting in favour of this pact, assuming responsibility. Those are the alternatives. Centrist and pro-European parties, I would call on all of you to support this pact. Not just because people want acts, but because they want acts rather than just words. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. The next rapporteur is Mr. Thomas Tobe. President, uh, Commissioners, uh, today we have an historic opportunity to finally put in place a common European migration policy. After migration crisis, after migration crisis, after political failure, after political failure, we can finally deliver to the European citizens. Most of us understand that if we have a common external border, we also need more common migration policy. The EPP group will support the migration pact. We think that it is crucial that we start to take back control from the smugglers because we need to decide who will actually enter the European Union. We need to strengthen our common border because only so can we also ensure that we move towards a policy when we can give protection to those in need and not to regular migrants. We also in the Migration Pact finally acknowledge that we need to cooperate also with third countries if we want to manage migration in a better way in the future. And finally, and perhaps even more important, in the Migration Pact, we make it clear that we need to cooperate better within the Union. It cannot be so that this comes to a responsibility for a few member states where we try to find, find different ad hoc solutions. Now we make it clear that this is a responsibility for everyone to contribute. And this is basically about building trust, building trust between the member states, but also building trust from the citizens that the European politicians actually can deliver also when it comes to migration. Yes, the negotiations have been long, and let's be honest, they have been hard, even within this House and together with the Council. But from the EPP group, I would like to thank for the cooperation with the SD group and the Renew group, and also with some responsible delegations in the ECR group. But I still hear many colleagues in this House now that is ready to do whatever it takes to stop the migration pact. And I would like to turn to the left group and the Greens group. You very often give speeches about the far right. But the truth is, the truth is, today you want to stop the migration pact together with Le Pen and AFD. That is the truth. Instead, instead, you should, you should, you should, instead vote in favor of the migration pact because then we could put a stop to the horrific numbers of deaths on the Mediterranean Sea. Don't leave this in the hands of the smugglers. <laughs> Colleagues, today we have an opportunity to send a clear message. Europe can agree also on divisive issues. Let's move away from the political deadlock. Let's move forward to a migration policy that actually works for everyone and that will for certain work better than what we have today. Vote in favour of the Migration Pact. Vote in favour for Europe. Thank you.
Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. The next reporter is Mr. Lopez Aguilar. The floor is yours. Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, President. Vice President, Commissioner, members of the European Parliament. Here, we are proceeding to a decisive vote. Not just looking to the past and the present in the European Parliament, but really looking to the future. Because we're looking at a first step in completing a mandate in the Charter of Fundamental Rights. We will be making now a common migration and asylum policy, a common asylum policy that gives added value to the unilateral, fragmented solutions that the states have taken thus far that we consider unfair and unsustainable. So finally, we will be implementing a European right and doing it with respect for our values. We will be taking a binding five regulation arrangement approach, specifically in the crisis one. We know that in the past we had cases where a country would have a significant inflow of irregular migrants. There were rescue, rescue missions also in some member states, in islands, and we had this case of European solidarity. Now we have sol European solidarity, which, through an implementing act, gives the Commission an ability, and along with the Council, to assist member states through a solidarity in an ordered and coordinated European approach. We have the AMIF, the fund that will assist member states to be able to rise to these emergencies. Now, finally, we're going to have a European legislation that is clear, legal certainty. To date, we had just had action or reaction. And now we have common guarantees, specifically with protection of those that are the most vulnerable, women, women with children with children, unaccompanied minors, those who need differentiated treatment. This was something that was very much front and center in our negotiation. Now, it wasn't easy, of course, extremely de decisive and very thorny, and for a long time, and we know that the negotiation was not easy in the European Parliament, nor was it easy with the 27 ministries in the Council in the final stage. Whatever negotiation, in every negotiation, there have to be some concessions, but you have to give legal certainty. That is more important than anything else. Rather than leaving things as they are, abandoning the member states to their own approach. Each time you have a, an emergency or a migration uh, inflow in the Canary Islands or the Greek Islands, up until now it has been national the response. And there was no assistance from or solidarity from Europe. This can no longer be the case. And what, in the run-up to the elections, we can say we have done everything that we could. And we are finishing our mandate with this search and rescue, this common, joint, ordered approach so that we don't leave it to the smugglers who are just exploiting this, making sure that there are legal ways so that people can come to Europe without tragically losing their life, which is something that has been happening for far too long. We have clear rules with the limits and all of the criticism, of course, that could be leveled against this in such a complex negotiation. It wasn't a good idea to leave the member states alone in this. And to conclude, after all of this work that we have carried out, all of the energy that we have expended, it would be much worse to leave the situation as it is, it's insufferable, and to state that we weren't able to achieve, it's much better for us to make a step forward. Let us vote in favor on every single one of the laws that are included in this package. Thank you very much, President. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Gracias. 
Thank you. I now like to give the floor to Mr. Bujade Villalba. Thank you, President. Commissioners, thank you to the shadows. Now, can't we have a political approach to this. We need to be simple and clear in the words, and I'd like to really thank everyone for having done just that. It's not something that always is the case in this House. Thank you to the assistants for all of their work. We were able to carry out this revision of Eurodac. We have an amplified, broadened database to identify illegal immigrants and any asylum seekers who try to come to the European territory without declaring their presence on our territory. Now, this is a database that will have not only asylum requests, but those individuals who are asylum shopping or requesting uh, residence permits in various countries, perhaps for this, many NGOs who are cooperating with the smugglers, whether they realize it or not, are so much against Eurodac. DAC. But we realize that we have finger, uh, Eurodac revision, fingerprints, facial images, and there is also the possibility to have an alert if there is a threat to European security. Moreover, we have all of the different cases of protection, uh, international protection, to avoid secondary movements if such that there is no abuse of international protection systems. So facial imaging, uh, ID documents, which will assist the authorities in identifying those who have false documents or who try to hide their identity from border authorities. This happens massively in Spain currently. Now, we know that we have lowered the age from 14 to 60 years of age for the collection of this data. This will assist us in making sure that the children, minors, are uh, unified with their families and not exploited. Now, we have to take this legislation. We have to be able to comply with it. And if that weren't the case, we will find a, pla a way to uh, prosecute or send you back to your ho or country of origin. Now, it is a start. There's much that remains to be done. When people come, for example, to the Canaries, the Canary Islands, and they have committed offenses in their home countries, when European uh, c countries need to request this information, they can get the criminal records from those uh, home countries via Eurodac and use that as a reason to reject the claim, uh, the asylum uh, claim. Now, with Algeria and Mauritania, we know that, that there is the uh, route to the Canary Islands, the Mediterranean. We need to have ordered returns by all of those, using every legitimate approach that we have. We can even suspend uh, trade agreements if we need to, or development aid if this is not to, uh, complied with. We cannot have a fraudulent or an illegitimate approach to requesting asylum. We are prohibiting extraordinary regularizations of migrants, making sure that we are able to approach this in a way such that all are complying with the rules. Now, moralistic capitalism is an insult to our intelligence. The left is trying to assist those who would prey on us lowering our uh, salaries by bringing in workers who would uh, create social dumping. Now, we should not have this type of a policy in Europe. The majority of Europeans realize that, and we are now undertaking the measures to uphold our security, protect employment, and protect the future of Europeans. And Eurodac is just the first step in that direction. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. Now I should like to give the floor to the next reporter, Ms. Björk. Thank you very much. The left party is highly critical of the agreement that's being debated on and put to the vote today. Hundreds of NGOs and organizations who work with the reception of migrants and uh, life-saving have been very clear 
we will say no to this agreement. The vote that will take place later will not resolve the problems that it was meant to resolve. There won't be an automatic redistribution of those seeking protection. The first country of arrival will s still be responsible. There's no real solidarity built in here. Nothing is being done, absolutely nothing, to stop the death in the Mediterranean. On the contrary, the borders which become more and more closed off will see more brutality, and so people have to take worse risks and take more dangerous routes. We'll get more of what is not working. And I wish that more of you had been there and seen what happens at the EU's borders, because we'll have more systematic defence, detention of people at the EU's borders, with the dehumanisation that that involves, we'll see more violence and humiliation. And I can assure you there's a lot of that already. We'll see deterrence and we'll see defence, we'll see detention. We'll see more cooperation with despots. Uh, you remember we started with Turkey, but here we are. The Libyan so-called Coast Guard, which is forcing people back to violence and torture, where people are turning people back to them to be tortured. We're doing everything to stop people coming to us. One of the most serious problems with this agreement is that the individual right to seek asylum is being attacked. It's being undermined in a terrible way because... The EU will be able to say, ah, you came from a so-called safe third country. You won't even get a request for protection monitored. So your request for protection will not even be checked. And that's basically undermining the right to asylum. Now, many of you here say, well, we couldn't have done anything else. We've heard this before, haven't we? Tina, there is no alternative. Well, why are you involved in politics? if you're happy with this dystopian uh, falling in with the right-wing footsteps, the uh, extremists. That's not the way the left party wants to go. We, from all parties, we all know that we can do things better. We proved that. When Putin's bombs were falling on Ukrainian citizens, we made sure that we gave protection to those who had to flee. That is the path we should have taken. That is still the path we should choose, not this brutal, dehumanised way. There is a proposal that actually uh, is actually quite prominent amongst the proposals, and that is a left uh, report from, from me about a migrant quota system to make sure the most vulnerable uh, mi migrants will be helped. We work with UNHCR and others. We make sure we support those countries who are having to take in many migrants, sometimes millions of migrants. That is what we do in the left. We roll up our sleeves when the rest of your political families here want to close off borders, increase brutality, get rid of the right to asylum. We on the left open up safe and legal routes for migration. This package, uh, including the migrant quota system, is not obligatory for member states, but it is one way for people to find a safe route to Europe, and I'm proud of that. And I hope that every single member state takes this opportunity to protect people, those who are se seeking protection in Europe, because that is the Europe that people want to see. They don't want to be part of a dystopian Europe where the only choice is to kowtow to the nationalist right. We know that we can do things better, so make sure you vote through the, the left forces when you have an opportunity to go to the ballot box in June. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. The next rapporteur is Mr. Nemec. Visoki Zbor. Thank you very much. Europe is at a turning point. Migration and asylum policy are amongst the most decisive topics for our citizens and for the politics as a whole, and often that means manipulation, blackmail, or excuses. Now, we felt these, these uh, consequences across the Schengen area, and reform of the entire area of migration was absolutely necessary. In the long run, the survival of the Union will depend on this. Therefore, following eight years of blockage and several attempts, we have succeeded. 
Later on, we will be v voting on the entire package of revised migration and asylum legislation. With them, Europe enters a new era. What we have on the table is not a perfect solution, but it is a compromise. But reform is a strategic necessity, and we in the European Parliament accept with a heavy heart. But we will not run away from our responsibility. Europeans expect this from us. I myself, myself was the rapporteur for the revision of the qualification regulation. Before that, it was negotiated by Tanya Fayon, our, my colleague, and I'd like to thank her. The bulk of the text w had already been agreed upon in 2018. Back then, Europe and the world were different. I am convinced that such a text would not have been possible at that time. So, the proposed qualification regulation was part of the first failed asylum policy reform in 2016. The regulation will replace the existing qualifications directive and provides, on the one hand, standards regarding the conditions for obtaining international protection in the Union, either refugee status or subsidiary protection status, and on the other hand, the rights of the beneficiaries in case of a positive decision. This regulation will have a disincentive effect on asylum shopping and thus indirectly on the occurrence of secondary migration. Until now, the application of the directive had been extremely arbitrary amongst countries. It was implemented in national legislation via a directive, but there were major discrepancies. We know of cases, for example, where an applicant for international uh, protection from Afghanistan had virtually zero chance of a positive decision in one member state and nigh on 100 percent chance of receiving it in another member state. We hope that such stories will be a thing of the past and that Europe will really come to life in this area as well. Let me now just focus on the main points of substance. Among the main achievements of the qualification regulation is the uniform minimum length of residence permit. So this will be three years for a refugee, one year for subsidiary protection, and two years if renewed. The renewal of the status will not be automatic or mandatory. The status belongs to the beneficiary as long as there is a need for this protection, and I'm particularly proud of this aspect. We also managed to expand the definition of family for the purposes of this regulation. One of the new things in the regulation is the assessment of the availability of international protection. It was thanks to the Parliament that we were able to severely limit the, this principle. This will be mandatory, only in cases where prosecution of the applicant is not carried out by the state. Refugees will also receive more protection due to the faster issuance of residence permits, which must also be free of charge. According to the new rules, the period of stay, which is, uh, will start, uh, the period of stay is counted towards the period of obtaining a permanent residence permit. This will now be counted for the time of the application was submitted and not before, only half the time from filing the application to recognition of protection. The processing of applications can take more than a year in some cases, so this change is extremely important. Now, beneficiaries will also be treated equally with citizens of the host country in terms of the rights such as social health care and access to work and education. Under the new law, unaccompanied minors, we know that they are specifically vulnerable, will be entitled to more protection and safeguards. And in this case, I am also extremely uh, proud of the Parliament's success, and I'd like to thank you colleagues for your attention, and I hope that we will uh, vote in favor of this. Thank you very much. The last reporter is Ms. Sofia Intveld. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner, colleagues, big majority of Europeans want a humane and controlled European migration policy, and that is why we have to end years of chaos and inhumane circumstances, because we will not be able to explain to our voters that we end this term in chaos. We've witnessed in recent years the total collapse of trust between the member states. We've seen pushbacks and violence at the external borders, inhumane reception conditions and asylum seekers sleeping on the streets of the richest countries on this planet. Over the past eight years, we've worked tirelessly for a package that is in line with our values, while the political climate is getting chillier by the day. 
Compromises have been reached just before Christmas with great difficulty. And I find it tragic that this House found itself defending European values against the Council. Because regretfully, many governments are not upholding those same values and they will aim to deny as many asylum claims as possible and put as many people in indefinite detention as they can, including children. That is why the European Commission needs to be tough and enforce the law that we're going to vote today. The European Commission will have to do a lot more to convince us that it will actually enforce the new pact, because in recent years it allowed human rights violations to happen, and it didn't lift a finger, I'm sorry to say. Dirty deals with Tunisia colleagues cannot be considered a confidence-building measure uh, either, for that matter. But this House also has a responsibility. We will have to hold the European Commission to account, and we have not done so for the last five years. If we're criticizing the Commission, and I am criticizing the Commission, we also have to acknowledge that we let the Commission get away with it for the past five years, and we didn't lift a finger. Today, in the vote, the far right will be showing its true colours. It will vote against because it doesn't really want solutions. It wants chaos and misery to, to continue because that's what they feed on. There are also colleagues who will vote against for understandable and legitimate reasons, and I share many of their concerns. But I still think that we should endorse the package because we have a responsibility as politicians. Because if we reject the pact, there will be nothing in its place. There's not going to be a better alternative, but we'll end up with a situation where no single rule will be respected anymore and we'll end in a race to the bottom and the end to the right of asylum in Europe. We cannot, unfortunately, legislate away an ultra-right majority. Because even if you reject the, the package, that majority will still be there. And it may actually be bigger in the next term. And are you going to entrust the next parliament with the elaboration of our asylum policies? Well, not me, colleagues, not me. With regard to my own file, the Reception Conditions Directive, we've obtained many guarantees and safeguards for asylum seekers, especially for the most vulnerable. We have ensured a legal representative for all unaccompanied children from the day they arrive. We made sure that the detention of children is the absolute exception and only with judicial authorization. We've guaranteed asylum seekers access to education and language courses and quicker access to the labour market. We ensured specific attention for vulnerable groups like women, children and LGBTIQ people. And the standards laid down in the Reception Conditions Directive will apply to the entire package. And upholding all of these elements in the implementation of the pact is crucial because it can only work if it has the trust of everyone. The weakness lies not in the legal text, colleagues. That is quite clear. It lies in the implementation by the Member States and enforcement by the European Commission. So today we need to prove the cynics wrong and show that asylum is a European matter requiring a European response in line with our European values. And we take responsibility. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, after the rapporteurs, let me welcome um, Commissioners uh, Hilva Johansson and Commissioner uh, Margrethe Schinas. And I will now give the floor to uh, Commissioner Hilva Johansson to address the plenary on behalf of the Commission. Thank you, President. Honourable Members, migration is about human beings. It's about men, women and children. And when our migration policy fails, human beings pay the price. It's time to fix our broken migration policy. Our citizens expect us to protect people fleeing war and prosecution. They expect us to welcome people who come legally for work or study. But at the same time, they expect us to prevent irregular arrivals and deadly journeys and to swiftly return those who don't have the right to stay. And this is what the Pact on Migration and Asylum is all about. 
The pact will help us to protect people, to protect our borders, and manage migration in an orderly way. I would like to thank all the rapporteurs, the shadows and your staff. The political agreement on the table is an amazing achievement. It's a true compromise, for sure. I would especially like to thank the EPP, the SND and the Renew groups for your intense efforts. Thank you for the courage to compromise. It's essential to show that courage also today in the vote. The vote will be a close one. And this is a now or never moment. This moment will not come back. History is watching and our voters are watching. Today's vote is about four years of intense legislative work. No, it's in fact eight years of intense legislative work. When we presented the pact four years ago, no one was really passionate about it. But no one fully rejected it either. And the same truth holds today. After the four years you have worked on these proposals, you have improved it. The agreement on the table once again shows Europe can deliver for its citizens. And now it's time to take responsibility. Four years ago, the blockage was in the Council. Now the decision is in your hands. And it's an all or nothing decision. All files must pass, or no files will pass. The last four years, we have met so often here in the plenary to discuss our EU action on migration challenges. Shipwrecks with massive loss of lives. Catastrophic fires in Lipa, in Moria. Sudden increase of arrivals in the Canaries, in Lampedusa. Every time we conclude, the conclusion was, we need a European response. Every time we thought it couldn't get any more difficult, it suddenly did. COVID, Lukashenko's attempt to create a crisis by instrumentalizing migrants, the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan, humanitarian admission or resettlement of people most at risk, Russia's war of aggression. We are now hosting more than four million Ukrainian refugees. Why, why did not let these crises overwhelm us? We did not le let these crises overwhelm us. And you know what I realized? The more challenging the crisis, the more European our response. We did not allow these crises to distract us. All those years, your patient work of lawmaking continued. The blue card, unblocked after many years. The asylum agency, unblocked. 44 trialogues on the negotiations on the pact, and I attended almost all of them. And now we finally have on the table a comprehensive European approach on migration. With uniform EU rules on asylum procedures, screening at the border, quicker protection for those likely to be granted asylum, and quicker returns for those who don't have the right to stay. New safeguards to protect vulnerable people, especially minors and families with children. Clear rules to prevent overcrowded reception centers. New, robust and independent monitoring mechanism to uphold rights at the border. And for the first time ever, mandatory solidarity. Support to member states under pressure will no longer be optional or improvised. In a few hours, you will vote. This is your moment. You are the legislators. Our citizens are watching. A vote for the pact will bring real change for the better. It shows Europe can compromise, Europe can manage my also huge challenges. If the vote on the pact fails, we all fail. The world is also watching. Whenever I go to third countries, they say, so you come here to discuss migration. Why don't you put your own house in order first? Now we can put our house in order. In February, I attended the Munich Security Conference. 
UN High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, Filippo Grandi, was asked if there is one single thing you can wish for to be implemented next year for better migration, what will that be? He answered, the pact. And Europe is watching. With the pact, we can manage one of Europe's biggest challenges, migration, in a sustainable way, based on our values. Now I will ask you to take the final and vital step and vote for the pact. As some of you know, I like football very much. So let me put it like this. We are in the finals. Everything is at stake. We are not watching from the stands. We are on the pitch. The ball is rolling. Now is the time to come together as a team and to score for Europe. It can take years until we are in a final again, if ever. We have this one opportunity and we have to take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We go now for the first round of political speakers, beginning by the EPP and Jeroen Lennox. Yeah, thank you, Will. Thank you very much, President. Today we're going to be voting on a fundamental revision of the asylum uh, policy. Nine years on from the migration crisis, we finally have something on the table to bring an end to the suffering on our borders, have stricter, stricter screening on our borders to make sure that genuine um, asylum seekers are protected and we deal with those quicker. So this migration pact will allow us to get control over the process. It is not the human smugglers who get to decide, it is the countries concerned. Of course, we're not going to have resolved all the problems like a wave of magic wand, but it is an important first step on which we need to build. Now, let's be clear here today. A vote against this pact isn't in favour of a better policy. No, a vote against this pact today is a vote for the maintaining of the current situation, for a further several years of streams of illegal immigrants coming, a lack of reception conditions, lack of controls on external borders, for the business model of human traffickers and their, uh, their game that costs lives. Uh, a vote against this is a vote for the status quo and that's why the extreme right, the extreme left and the Greens are trying to come together in some strange coalition against, uh, you see, Franz Timmermans and, and then Kert Wilders. So all sorts of people around Europe expect, and rightly so, that Europe will deliver here. It's a huge amount of responsibility that all of us in this chamber today uh, have on our shoulders. Let us not run from this responsibility. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker on behalf of the S&D Group, uh, Gabriela Bischoff. Thank you, Herr. Thank you, President. Madam Commissioner, let me start by addressing the rapporteurs and thank them this was years of hard work, and perhaps it's one of the most important decisions we're going to make during this legislative period, and I think it's one of the most difficult for many. However, right now it's true. The European citizens are looking at us and are trying, wanting to see if years of blockades are over. Are we really going to take a stab? And is this pact going to solve everything? No. But is it better than status quo? Yes. Many people have pointed that out. And in this pact, there are points that are painful for us. For example, when I look at it about families with small children aren't enjoying specific uh, protection in the border procedure, but it, nothing else was possible. And if Europe isn't capable of actioning now in this field, which is a key field that has to be solved at the European level, then you're only those people who want to divide us, who want to have chaos, those are the only persons are going to benefit, those people who don't want Europe to be able to take decisions. So please, I ask you, support this pact and ensure that it is seriously and responsibly implemented. 
<clears throat> Thank you very much. Next speaker on behalf of the Renew Group, Malik Asmani. Yes, thank you very much, uh, President. Yeah, voorzitter. President, I'll do this in Dutch. I don't often speak Dutch, but this is an important time to do this because we're standing at a historic moment. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Commissioner Shinas and, above all, Ilva Johansson for the work they've done. Now it's up to us, up to the European Parliament, in a few hours to decide. It's a historic moment because for all too long we've been trying to find European solutions to the migration issue. And I understand their particular interest involves, I understand the emotions here, but they tend to block finding solutions. So it's a question of assuming responsibility, and as far as I'm concerned, and all of those who've negotiated, we have shown our responsibility, and I think that best testament to important people who are negotiating, but maybe not everybody is aware that this has been the case. It's your responsibility to vote in favour of this. If you vote against this, you are voting in favour of the status quo. High drama, high dudgeon in humanitarian terms, not getting a grip on migration. So it's high time to vote in favour of this. If you do that, we're taking a step forward. It's not ideal. It can always be improved. It can always be better from a number of perspectives. But we're stepping, taking a step in the right direction. So I'm appealing to your responsibility and not your poli political or particular interests that you might want to hold sway today. Thank you very much. Next speaker on behalf of the Greens Group, Saskia Prickmont. La mobilité humaine. Human mobility has created the economic and cultural wealth of our continent. Today I ask myself the following question. What about our values of hum uh, humanity? and solidarity. These are the pillars of Europe. You are about to give in to the far right. It will never be an enough to put children in custody, to push them back, to collect data on six-year-olds and to do this. Now this pact does not give any answers to better managing the inflows or putting an end to smuggling or to the reception in our uh, home countries. The pact is the opposite. It is a fortress Europe in the text and its collaboration with dictatorships. You've heard people say, we need a deal after 10 years. We need this now. It's been blocked for by the European governments. But it's better to have no deal than a bad deal, That would a deal that would be backsliding in our rights. It's a true failure of civilization. Thank you. Now the next speaker on behalf of the ECR group, Nicola Procaccini. Thank you, President. You know, I would dare anyone in this House to state that the European U Union has managed migration well over the course of recent years. On the one hand, we have far too many deaths at sea. We have a huge business of human smuggling. We have the political battle for immigration by NGOs. They have been applauded and lauded here in this house, even though they are the links to those who are smuggling the people. On the other hand, we also have a loss of safety in our cities, an increase in jobs paid under the table, which uh, leads to a fire sale of our workers' rights, horrible exploitation of women, spreading of radical Islam with its most violent manifestations. Now, improving the current situation, this is the only reason to vote in favor of some of the regulations that are a part of this package. Very few steps in the right direction. There are few, but they are important. With a real hope that we can continue resolutely to work on this in the next legislative period, we have to put an end to ships leaving the coast. We have to put in, uh, we have to work with countries of origin and 
decide who can come into Europe and who cannot. This is the only way that we're going to be able to do this, even with developing countries, and to take away the reasons for emigration. This is what we've been trying for years to get the left to understand. They would like everyone to be able to come in here, and then they would like to give them the right to vote, and then they can supplant the will of our people. Now, there has been a decrease by 71% of arrivals in Italy and a huge drop in deaths at sea. Now, this shows how effective the Milani government's choices have been. It's been preventing arrivals, working with patients and determination on the external uh, aspects. Now, sadly, we've wasted far too much time, and therefore we can't get into the substance of the new regulations just a few weeks out from the vote. But that is precisely what we should do, and it's what some of us will do. Thank you very much. Now the next speaker on behalf of the ID group, Jordan Bardella. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. Well, here we are. The Asylum Migration Pact is moment of truth for the members of this Parliament and history is watching us. We can see mass migration, which is now a threat for our security, for our identity, and indeed for the stability of our societies. Demogra demography really can write history, and we're only at the start of this. The existential risk at U that Europe's facing is worrying. The financial contribution of the member states, where President Macron s says this is the way forward, but in fact it's a submersion or punishment. Millions and millions of migrants are coming. Thousands of migrants are coming to towns and cities. You have to pay a heavy price if you don't want them to come. So we're going to be uh, against this pact of submersion with the incessant demands to receive migrants, these migrant uh, flows that just don't stop, we are not going to be replaced or submerged. Uh, you must respect their call here. Next speaker on behalf of the, the left group, uh, Martin Schwirdewald. Uh, Thank you very much, President. And this day will be in the European history known as the day that the you, we simply departed from our humanitarian principles. Those who would like to uh, support this reform have actually led it to its grave. And if you think of all the horror and crimes of the Second World War, that became the never again call for for the world. And But right now, this is simply cowering to the right in Europe. With this migration pact, the member states are actually taking away the right of protection for people who need it, and instead, and instead they're building this wall, um, a high wall, in order to keep them out. And so the EU external border uh, is going to be blocked. No more Moria, many of you say, and many of you people here, the, council, the members and the commission as well, are here saying, but now you're simply bearing the right to asylum and you're making the situation worse on the external board and you're, and you're threatening human lives. And you're not working with the conditions to keep people from uh, fleeing, you're keeping them uh, you're making worse the conditions when they're arriving. And with this policy, you're so simply distracting people, and it shows your lack of respect of history and your contempt for human rights. And uh, it's just amazing. I'm speechless. Thank you very much. This brings the speeches on behalf of the political groups to a conclusion, and I'd like to give the floor to the non-attached members with Laura Ferrara. Thank you, President. In 2020, President von der Leyen stated that she would abolish the Dublin system. Vice President Skinas, Commissioner Johansson, uh, you said that it would be solidarity would be mandatory. Now, 10 years on, if we look at the first proposal as presented by the Commission in 2015 on the package. We have worked for 10 years, negotiations, and here we are voting on a pact that continues to look 
at responsibility for the country of first entry. There is no mandatory solidarity. If there are no penalties, then how can we call it mandatory? It also sets a border procedure and a screening procedure. That means that uh, people can be detained, children too, and there is a dubious legality of this. There will be violations of fundamental rights, no doubt. We cannot support this pact. Why? Because we are Europeans. Because we want a European solution. And this pact does not respect Article 80 on TFEU. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to give the floor to Lina Dupont. Thank you very much, President. For me, in the debate, there have been three key issues. Asylum and migration, I think, has to be uh, something that is assumed by all levels, whether it be Europe, national level or regional level. And whatever we can provide, we must provide. Third, the principle, human with those in need of protection, firm with those who are not. In 2019, we saw the failure of the pact that was la laying in, uh, in shreds before us, and now we had to find solutions. And in this House we've debated, we've fought together, we've tried to find solutions and way forwards. We got stuck and bogged down, we've stormed out of negotiating rooms, and when it got difficult we came back together, tried to strike that delicate balance that the pact has at the end of the day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the strength of this House, that it can do so much more than occasionally is viewed. Here we stand today and see if all of these debates have been worthwhile, if they were right or if they've been a waste of time. It's not. It's no less than the question of the ability of the European Union to act, whether we in this House are able to work against the uh, rebel rousers and others who are not achieving things. We need to keep to promises. We need to make sure that uh, unfriendly neighbours are relieved of any opportunity to take advantage of the situation. We have to make sure that it's not the s smugglers who decide who comes to us and who doesn't. We have to correct the failures of 2019. The pact is not perfect. You've heard this on many occasions, but it is a decisive tool to make sure that we have a European solution together, that we as Europe are in a better position to come up with solutions together and overcome what was failed in the past. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Pietro Bartolo. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, this is not the reform that we wanted by any means. It's not the response that we needed to give to those who need protection in Europe. It doesn't right the wrongs of the past. It masks solidarity with uh, prevention and repression in a desperate attempt to defend Fortress Europe. Adopting this reform will legalize the lack of rights in Europe. It will mean arbitrary detention for even children. There will, could be pushbacks to so-called safe countries, and it will make SAR difficult. A lot of NGOs that will, ha will have to also defend themselves against instrumenta instrumentalization. I'd like to state this clearly. This pact does not give the solution, and it could actually risk just externalizing our borders. Now, Commissioners, I have worked a life to assist those who are looking for rights in Europe, and I will not give that up, and no one sh in this House should do that. I will not give up anything when it comes to humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to give the floor now to Jan Christoph Etchen. President, colleagues, for years now, we had a blockade in the European Council in this matter of asylum and migration policy. And today, today we have the opportunity to unblock this blockade. And I call on you. Of course, it's easier to find something that you don't like in this pact, a, a point that you dislike where you can say, all right, 
then I'm, I'm simply not going to vote in favor. However, do you really want to make it that simple? For years we've worked on this, and we have found, it, found compromise. And, and I th we have compromise which try to ensure humanitarian standards, and on the other hand, uh, ensure more order in the uh, policies. Don't vote against this pact. If you vote against that, you ensure this remains as it is. And as it is, it cannot remain, dear colleagues. So, so t vote in favor of this pact. This is a response to what the citizens w want from us, to finally take action on a migration policy. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Eric Makout. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can agree that the European asylum policy needs restarting, but this asylum pact is not a, uh, a new start. In fact, in, in areas it is a worsening of situations has already f uh, failed. We've seen this in Greece. That's what led to Moria and led to the chaos that we're seeing again and again reading in the headlines. We as Greens would vote for this package if it meant that some of the problems would be resolved. But children and families being locked up in camps, that's not a solution. For years it's been attempted, but people don't disappear just because you lock them up or treat them worse. Migration is a reality that we have to face. And this facing of reality is something that this asylum pact is not doing. We can't just make things disappear because we want them to disappear. We have to assume responsibility for asylum policy. But it has to be an asylum policy that works and that doesn't capitulate to a right-wing pressure, that it, it needs to be based on solidarity, human rights, rule of law. It needs to be pragmatic as well, using those uh, principles. And I hope we get this in the future because it's all the more necessary. Pardon. Sorry. Eric. Eric. You've got a blue card uh, if you want to answer. It comes from um, Mrs. Um, Derimel. Thank you very much, dear Eric. Thank you for allowing this blue card. And you're right with what you said in the criticism on migration pact. However, I do recall that the Green Foreign Minister, after there was a chance for agreement, said that this solution was uh, urgently necessary and overdue. And I remember that the Greens um, spoke in favor of the SEAS at their party congress. But the German government, with Green participation, was able to adopt, uh, agree to this pact. So what do you say to this? I mean, today, uh, you're, we're, we're burying the right to individual asylum. And, and, and what was really unfair is, is being um, carved in stone. So this is really not a solution. I don't want well, I can report that our members of the government are not welcoming this pact with opening arms. They have points of criticism as well. And what's important to me is, because uh, I have heard from other no noises from the Christian Democrats, that it can't be a question about how to find best majorities uh, to uh, do that. The, com the Christian Democrats needed to find compromises with us because we found solutions, because there is possibility to find good solutions if the Christian Democrats after the elections do think about working along those lines rather than uh, allowing Georgia Maloney to push the Christian Democrats' position further and further to the right. That is quite important, and we can maybe discuss the rest over an apple juice. Muito obrigado. Próximo... Thank you very much. The next uh, speaker is Ms. Sidlow. You've got the floor, please, colleagues. You've got the floor. President, colleagues, migration policy of the EU is wrong, very wrong, and it needs to be changed. But you can't put out the fire by adding more oil to it. The arguments 
the words that are uttered here by those who are enthusiastic about the pact. I had heard in the past when the former Chancellor of Germany and President of France were trying to convince us that we should accept any amount of immigrants to Europe. Today you are putting on the table a pact which does not provide solutions to any of the problems. Do these proposals enhance security of our citizens? No, they don't. Will they help people who arrived in Europe to look for a better life and today have to spend their lives in the streets without any hope? No, they don't. No, they won't. Will they help those who actually trade in human beings? Yes, they will, because they know they'll have more money to help transfer any amount of illegal immigrants because they will be later relocated to member states. And those member states who will not want to do this will have to pay. There will be money in circulation. They know it very well. So they'll further engage in this. So again, don't, don't add oil to the fire, please. And I think that most of you know that these solutions are wrong solutions. Prossima. The next speaker is Annalisa Tardino. Thank you, President. Now, this is the umpteenth debate prior to an important vote that will let us know if we will have an asylum and migration pact. The Lega delegation has asked for the following, to prevent departures and our borders without risking going to jail, like uh, Minister Salvini, uh, to set up centers for identification in the transit countries to uh, manage uh, managed by our uh, European agencies and to strengthen our cooperation agreements for returns. These are common sense proposals and they do not support the criminal business that you know and promote. Now the proposal today however uh, is not very good. It doesn't take on board any of these objectives. It doesn't assist those who are in a situation of desperation that are traveling through de deserts. They do not assist our countries that are now conquered and that are on the uh, that have a danger of terrorism and they do not support our societies and our co european cultures now i'd like to state clearly that this is really a discount proposal and we need to make sure that we protect our civilization because we have to do that legally. We cannot become slaves or delinquents. This is the Europe that we want. We will build it with courage, consistency, common sense, and without any ideology. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. I'd like to give the floor now to Cornelia Ernst. These are this pact is a pact of shame and disgrace because it abolishes the individual's right to asylum. And what remains, it do doesn't take into account individuals' reasons for uh, fleeing, but rather the lies of third countries or some kind of quotas or some kind of neurotic uh, understanding of the right of migration. And, uh, and you're not taking into account the people dying at our borders, people dying at the high sea. No. You are voting in favor of border proposal, uh, procedures which would put children and families with children in detention. However, what you can't vote away is the resistance to this kind of poli politics, empathy, humanity. You can't even destroy with an axe. Just remember, activists... NGOs, are they're not going to stop helping refugees and the and the the Turkish refugees who are helping uh, other uh, refugees every day. In 2015, I met a Catholic priest in Iraq, and there are thousands of people being killed. And this priest uh, opened his church for those who were fleeing, regardless of religion. There, those are the military positions of, the, of ISIS, and this is my church. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, whether we're going to be attacked. However, I'm going to remain. 
because I can't do anything else. Thank you very much. I'd like to give now the floor to Kostas Papadakis. We condemn this uh, inhuman uh, pact. You say that you will deal with crisis, uh, with uh, preventive uh, jailing, with uh, new fences, with the Frontex, uh, and with this so-called voluntary relocations. These are the causes that cause shipwrecks, like the one today in Hios, where three children uh, died. You, what you are doing is that you are burying the Geneva Convention because there is no more individual right to asylum. You are sending these people back to the hell of imperialist wars or to third countries. You say that uh, there is an alternative kind of uh, protection, for example, for the Palestinians that they can go from uh, Gaza to the West Bank. All of the governments uh, in Greece are hand in hand with uh, Orban and uh, Meloni. And this is uh, the end of the so-called EU of the rule of law. People should punish the EU and give strength to the Greek Communist Party in the elections. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Papadakis. Next is uh, Juan Ignacio Zoido. One minute. Microphone for the speaker. Hoy celebramos. Today, this is an historic day. Following about a decade of blockage, the European Union has come to an agreement on the migration and asylum package, at least I hope. Now, this is the right time. According to the recent data, this is a crisis at the same level of what took place in 2015. We need to protect adopt this package to protect our external borders and any threats to our citizen security. Now, this is an issue of responsibility and solidarity. It alleviates those countries that are frontline countries like Spain. It also gives certainty to those who need international protection. Now, we hope that the uh, this pact will mean that we can approach this with a solution. The EPP thinks that this will be a long-term solution to the benefit of all of Europe. Uh, Mr. Zoido, next to Sylvie Guillaume. One minute. Nous sommes à la fin d'un long... We're at the end of a long debate on the immigration pact on the eve of the European elections, which obviously brings a political light to the vote we're facing. To determine our vote, we need to look at some questions. How will they deal with migrants? Are they going to help them? Uh, is there going to have to be some collective responsibility and solidarity from member states? And I have to answer no, and that's unfortunate. We know that it's not going to resolve the problems that the member states are complaining of. Even worse, there's an e even more uh, a situation where rights are being suppressed. So we have to do something, but without solutions for the, first, the country of first arrival, uh, there, there's still a problem. Some people are concerned that it doesn't deal with the major questions, the relations with the source countries of migrations. There doesn't seem to be anything there, N neither about the enormous resources would be required for this pact, nor the business model of the smugglers, or the necessity to have a European approach here to help legal routes. And the, it, we can see that climate refugees will increase in the future, so it's impossible to support this. That's one minute. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam President, Madam Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. This is possibly one of the most important debates that we'll have here at the end of this legislature. Uh, and I'm not telling through any, anything new here. The extreme left and the extreme right seem to have found themselves in the devil's pact uh, to uh, shoot this down. We've been speaking about this for eight years, and hopefully, when it comes to the vote in a few moments' time, we'll take the first important step towards a genuine European asylum and migration pact. No 
ladies and gentlemen, not everything is perfect. Of course, you can always pick holes in things. But what's good about this pact is that finally we have a European approach. Finally, we have stricter controls on external borders. Finally, we have more solidarity between member states. Is it perfect? No. We think in Renew Europe, the Liberals, more needs to be done. Yes, there needs to be more official labour migration that's made possible. Yes, I'd like to see a, a tougher approach to human smugglers and traffickers. And yes, I would like to make sure that a child migration is protected. But let us finally do what the European citizens expect of us and vote in favour of this and make sure that we have a European approach and don't be told anything different from the populists from the extreme left or the extreme right. Thank you. Sir, Tineka Strick, one minute. <clears throat> Dear Chair, Commissioners, we had the chance to fix a broken system, a system now in which border states bear the brunt of the responsibility, fundamental rights are flouted, and impunity is the norm. This pact was our chance to share responsibility, to end pushbacks, to uphold the right to asylum and make reception human again. I acknowledge improvements. I'm glad that we stimulate resettlement and that for the first time member states must offer solidarity. But I urge them to fulfill this obligation in the only meaningful way by offering relocation. But I'm extremely worried that these rules systematically lock up asylum seekers, even families with children, at the external borders for months on end. This law erodes the rights and safeguards of asylum seekers and risks dangerous deportations. It allows for undermining the common standards, which is exactly opposite of what we need. We need fostering a common policy based on mutual trust. So we are far from fixing the Thank asylum you very much, system. Mr. Rick. Let us indeed take responsibility to finally get it right. I give the floor next to Patrick Yaki. One minute. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think uh, that we should just maybe replay the way you think. Uh, first of all, you decided to do away with readmission, so stopping the immigrants were uh, upon departure. Then you limited um, everything that was related to fight with uh, those who trade in human uh, beings. And then you don't focus enough on the rights of our community in relation to uh, immigrants. And then uh, you talk about the countries and the potential fen penalties, 20,000 euros per one immigrant that would not be at, uh, accepted. So it's basically a love letter to those who trade in human beings because they know the money will be there and people will have to be accepted. What will be the results? They'll get richer, more people will be lost at sea and Europe will have more problems. You will get monies from countries such as Poland in penalties but you will end up resolving no problem at all. So more radical change in new elections is expected. Don't work for central and leftist parties. Work, work for traditionalists. We'll make sure that those documents are done away with. One minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we're being submerged in thousands of illegal immigrants. Our people have had more than enough of this. And what's the European Union doing? Well, the exact opposite. The EU Migration Pact is going to oblige us to take even more migrants. Moreover, they're going to allow four and a half non-European uh, foreigners to be brought into the EU. There isn't even a mention of defending the borders against the invasion of immigrants. And this is being done deliberately, and they are deliberately replacing the European population. The colonization of Europe, the, s the suicide of our unique civilization. Our borders must be closed. Asylum must go to a certain place because our people don't want this. Uh, they don't want more migration. They want less. This EU migration pact is complete madness. And that's why the people will call you to account. Intervelt has a blue card for you. Will you take it? Yeah. Go ahead. Ms. Intervelt, Sophie. 
voorzitter, uh, afgezien. Thank you, president. Regardless of the fact that your speech was full of lies and nonsense, I'd just like to hear if you. When you talk about replacement, are you talking about the replacement theory that was used by the Nazis, uh, for which you've received penalties before? Is that what you mean? Well, Mr. Neufeld, well, Mr. Neufeld, I didn't receive any penalties because that's an official sanction of the European Parliament. I find it very illustrative that liberals like you want MEPs uh, to be prevented from saying what they say. Because these are the words of Ms. Johansson herself. She's used that. Three and a half million uh, non Europeans who will be coming in, that's too few. We need to have a million more because the people of Europe are becoming fewer and fewer. The demography is suffering. So replacing the population by immigration is replacement. Whether you like hearing it or not, it is a perfect description of what the EU is planning. So now I. Uh, hold on a second. Now you want a point of order? Okay, go ahead, yes. Sophie. Um, uh, whether it was an official reprimand uh, or not, uh, Mr. van der Driessen has been told that he cannot use Nazi terminology in this chamber uh, and that he was not allowed to do so. So I expect okay. the presidency of this House to take the necessary steps. Thank you. We will look at what has happened. So next, Konstantinos Arvanitis. One minute. No, no, no. Hold on. Let's... We have had correspondence on this. I know. We, we have exchanged correspondence on this. Okay. Mr. Arvanitis, please. I have this another thing. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, and uh, I would like to talk especially to Mr. Lenners and the colleagues from Renew. Now, this game with... Uh, the so-called two extremes, uh, extreme left and extreme right, is very dangerous. My group is called the left. It's not called the extreme left. No, this... Uh, uh, no, no, I, I did not say anything about your group. Uh, today is a sad day for us, for Greece, for the countries uh, of first uh, admission, for the people that are on the run. You are cheering about this pact, and we worked for you in order to have something positive. But what we have here is a missed opportunity. Because why? Do we have something about legal pathways as we wanted? Do we have uh, an obligatory resettlement in every member state without asterisks? So this is where we disagree. And about the issue of uh, prima facie, and the rest. I mean, what? So this is the basic issue for us, and this is why the left would not vote for it. Minute. Thank you, President. Dear colleagues, today I want to talk about the real essence of the whole migration debate, because really it has never really been about helping refugees. We all want to help people in need. This debate, however, in its essence, is about whether or not we're able to, pr uh, to preserve our European identity, our way of life, norms, culture, and traditions. The promotion of mass migration threatens all that. It is, in reality, a social transformation project that is imposed upon the European people without, in most cases, ever asking them about their opinion and consent. Illegal mass migration leads to the disintegration of society. It breaks down European norms. It destroys public security. The first signs of that horrible disaster are already visible in many Western European cities. Think of just France, for instance, and the brutal, horrendous murders that have become part of French life. Public safety is deteriorating. The state is losing control. Public authority is slipping out of its hand. We in Hungary haven't given up on defending our way of life, our security and Thank culture. You, Mr. The Hungarian people have been asked about this issue and they have repeatedly rejected illegal mass migration. Thank you, Mr. This is why we Hedwig. firmly reject this pact. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor now to Elisabeth Vosenberg. One minute. Thank you, Mr. 
Thank you, sir. Dear colleagues, the pact we are voting on today is an answer to those who say that the EU cannot do anything about the important issues. Now, the regulation on force majeure uh, that was uh, my dossier allows the member states uh, to deal with a uh, massive influx of uh, people, always, of course, with respect to the fundamental rights of the people that are asking uh, asylums. And we also managed uh, to include uh, this uh, instrumentalization of migrants which is something that Turkey does permanently so we will now have uh, this uh, solidarity between the member states uh, and the weights will be distributed and moreover the countries will, will have to contribute so that all of the needs of a member state in crisis will be covered finally I would like to say that uh, the Uh, requests of the member states on the first line are being covered. Bel Santos, one minute. Thank you, Madam President. Si a politica... Politi politics is art, if that's the case. This is one of the greatest illustration of this fact. But we all understand that after many years and the lack of a common migration and asylum uh, policy, we're finally getting this into carved into marble. We're finally getting this. It defends European values and it will be for the future. This is not this is not my pact. This is not really the pact of anyone. It is what is possible. It's uh, not the one of the xenophobic far right that is uh, sowing oh, hate and discord amongst all of us. Now, it is not the time to disengage. And it is the time for new struggles. We need to make sure that we monitor this, that we implement to this, and we need to defend fundamental rights of migrants and refugees. We have not stopped our struggle. We will continue to do it with more resoluteness. Sahlani, one minute. Thank you, Madam President, Commissioner, dear colleagues. We, I have was forced to f flee to Sweden when I was 15 years old. There were no legal ways, and now there are no legal ways either. So we can't leave the, uh, this question in the hands of those uh, of the barbed wire right. We can't leave this um, question in the hands of the dreaming left, because there'll be chaos, there'll be no legislation. So we can't just leave this question in the hands of human smugglers. So this is a first step. It's a first step to a sustainable, humane immigration and migration policy. This is the first step to have solidarity among member states, that we can work together so we can create better protection for people who are fleeing from oppression and war. And only together can we be ready for the next migration crisis and hold the border against the smugglers of human beings. Thank you. Damian Karam, one minute. In 2015, I was a mayor near Calais, and I experienced the crisis. It wasn't a migration one, as you said, Madame Keller. I saw that. It, there were about 2,500 Syrians that were arrested there, and I was able to beat the far right in the next elections. As an MEP, I took that experience, and I thought that I could assist in changing this type of policy. I hoped that we would have solidarity, humane proposals, the rights of the exiled, that the European Parliament should stick to its values. 
I didn't expect anything from the right or the hard right. They look at hate to cover up their failures. Uh, from the Renaissance, I would have hoped for some humanity. The socialist, I hope they would be courageous, unfortunately, uh, naively. And, but here we are with this abject pact, and it lacks humanity, solidarity. Uh, to fight the far right, you have come into a pact with the devil. And we denounce this unanimously. We will not erect the walls of the Fortress Europe. You are legalizing the worst practices. As the uh, United Nations rapporteur in Libya stated, thank you. Minutes. Best of colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, would Alan Kurdi have been saved with the package of measures that we're about to vote on? Would all of the thousands of people who drowned in the Mediterranean Sea be prevent, have been prevented? I fear not. The Asylum and Migration Pact doesn't do anything to stop the uncontrolled surge uh, which are in the hands of human traffickers and to combat it. Therefore, I don't agree with this package on that point. Will the pressure on our um, societies be less with these measures? I'm a little more positive on this point. I expect that concluding files on asylum requests that have no chance of success at the border would reduce the number of secondary movements. And I think that the extension of the two databases to everybody concerned would work. And on these two sub-points, I can support this pact. On the others, I cannot support it. This is from my heart. Flans Belang have managed to send in a few amendments at this late stage, knowing that they won't have any success there. I've been involved in this for eight years. We've been negotiating for eight years. I haven't seen Flams Belang there at all. Don't fall into the trap, uh, electors. Flams Belang has not been involved in this discussion. The NVA has. It's far from perfect, perfect but we're doing our parliamentary work. With strict use of this asylum regime, uh, we would hardly have to take on any illegal migration, nor, nor would Germans. So the Dublin migration uh, regulation is going to be replaced. This pact is going to uh, turn Frontex into a rescue organization, and then it's going to extend family reunification uh, on to uh, uncles and third cousins and anyone you meet on the way. And fourth of all, it's going to uh, turn um, Europe upside down with this uh, allocation, reallocation of refugees. So nothing in the pact says anything about um, border protection or the return of migrants and that the mig migrants can continue to enter without identification. The reason is clear, because the EU wants more migrants, illegal or not. The floor next to King Agal, one minute. Madam President, Brussels forces imposes this migration policy, but it has failed. Migrants have become more and more violent, and they remain in Europe illegally. European bureaucracy and the European left have learned nothing from their mistakes. This new package is very bad, and they want to force it through. It would even worsen the situation. Hungary, in the most decisive manner, refuses this pact. This would uh, come with an obligatory uh, sharing of migrants, setting up camps. We would be flooded by millions of migrants and uh, we would help people smugglers. We would like to stop illegal migration. And the Hungarian model is a successful example. There is a physical and legal block. Uh, nobody can enter Hungary's uh, property, uh, illegal, Hungary's um, area illegally. We need to, we must protect our borders, and it should be us who decide with whom we live together. And this will be one question at the elections. Minute. Thank you, President, dear colleagues. Two months ahead of the European elections, following eight years of chaos, and thousands of lost lives were facing key decisions. Massive illegal 
arrivals of thousands of people are often instrumentals in geopolitical games. For too long, they introduced uh, misery, chaos, and security threats for both Croatia and Europe. We have been defending something uh, as uh, founded uh, in uh, good sense, and it is now being adopted. Even people who are naive recognize that we must put an emphasis on security, better protection of the border, better use of biometric uh, features, and uh, faster deportation of people who uh, have no right to asylum. We have no illusions that these uh, migration pressures will disappear. This agreement is not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Let us show that we are mature in these times without precedent. We must show that we can offer concrete uh, solutions and not just slogans. The next, Elena Yoncheva, one minute. Thank you, Madam President. Madam Commissioner, Mr. Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, more than, for more than 10 years now, it's clear that European policy when it comes to migration has, is not working. This policy is not an efficient one, it doesn't work for the member states, in particular those who are subjected to huge pressures at the external borders of the EU, nor for those requesting asylum. For the first time, the European Union will have a permanent system of reallocation and resettlement, which would be obligatory on member states and not just voluntary. We've agreed on the appropriate procedures to apply that will be efficient to deal with asylum requests and on the clear rules to deal with the situation under crisis terms. And this should lead to a common European solution and bring an end to the chaos at the external borders. And Commissioner Johansson, Commissioner Skinas, I'd like to thank you for your personal commitment in favour of this pact. Thank you. Chevan. Next is Damien Borselager. One minute. Okay, not here. Next, Charlie Weimers. One minute. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, colleagues, if you want less migration to Europe, kill this deal. Only three of these legal acts will help in the fight against illegal immigration without sacrificing national sovereignty or imposing costs. The others will incentivize more migration. <laughs> How will redistribution deter millions and millions of migrants destined to arrive in Europe the coming decades? It won't. Instead, the entire EU will mimic Sweden's migrant problems, gang wars, overrun welfare systems, and increasing Islamism all over Europe. Commissioner, you once on the left won't be in charge after the EU elections. Then the center-right can negotiate a deal that stops illegal migration, locates the entire asylum process outside Europe, increases deportations, and support frontline member states without imposing forced solidarity. Thank Colleagues, you, vote no. Let the people decide in the elections more or less migration. I give the floor next to Lukas Mandel. One minute. Thank you very much, Madam President. Members, Commission, there are many persons here that it makes it clear it's a special day. It can be a, a very special day for the European Union with the motto, and she, it finally takes action. And so citizens can hear that we say, yes, we will go into act actually address irregular migration and do something that people have been waited for for years. In autumn 2020, there was a proposal from the Commission, and it was very often criticized for good reasons. Uh, it was a good proposal. The negotiations were very long, and of course, without Austria's help, it would not have come to a conclusion. And I think now we need a majority here in the Parliament. And I think that the fact that ex the extreme right and the extreme 
left or against, that's, that means it's a good package. And I think this is a way of addressing irregular migration, above all, in the interest of those people who are taking a very dangerous journey and in the interest of our citizens. I um, uh, applications and I give the floor to Pedro Marquez. One minute. Thank you, President, Commissioners, colleagues. It may be easy to come here and criticize the, pack, the, the migration pact. It is obviously not perfect, but it is a compromise, a moment in which Europe stops dragging its feet on migration, and therefore it is a positive moment. The pact will establish effective procedures to manage our borders, but never giving up on EU solidarity with the refugees. That's why the far right hates it. It will overcome national selfishness that left alone our border countries in the Mediterranean, introducing a binding solidarity mechanism between member states. That is also why the far right hates it. It addresses the need to cooperate with origin countries. If the EU really wants to manage migration, it must cooperate on the stabilization and development of these countries. And that is also why the, the far right hates it. Imperfect as it might be, this is one of the milestones of these five years. The far right hates it because they will have to live with the fact that we deliver. For the Europeans, yes, we will deliver today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. So we go to Catch the Eye now, and I start by giving the floor to Tomislav Sokol. Thank you very much. This pact on migration and asylum we will enable member states to protect external, external borders and to fight the uh, traffickers. If you, want, if you like it or not, the member states will decide who can enter the EU and not the uh, traffickers. Um, the police at the external borders will determine who is eligible to uh, apply for asylum and who is not. We need to say it clearly that illegal migrations are a security threat for European citizens. The European Union cannot welcome everyone who wants to come to the European Union only because uh, there is a better life here. We need to uh, prevent the um, abuse of the social and welfare systems. Uh, the left MEPs in the, this parliament have criticized the Republic of Croatia in managing the situations in which people try to illegally enter our country. This is why the European Union needs clear rules about migration. Thank you, Madam President. Now, I will not vote in favor of this migration and asylum package for a very simple reason. There are certain reasons for a backsliding of the values, but also it means that there's no real solid European solidarity. Now, this pact will mean that there will be less protection for asylum seekers. There will be more violence on the borders, more violations of fundamental rights in terms of uh, asylum and migration. And there will be an externalization of our European migration policy. For all of these reasons, I think that we have missed the opportunity that was ours to have a pact that was one that was effective and one that would give and respect European values. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Anna Miranda. The world is looking to us for this vote. We do not want a fortress Europe with borders and that pays dictators to externalize our borders. This migration and asylum package is focused on security and to the detriment of human rights and our values. We cannot give in to the far right in this house and listen to them what we're supposed to what we have to do. We know what we need to do. Protect people first. 
walls leave aside European dignity. Walls do not respect individuals. Today, we are going to be on Luxembourg Square supporting all of those organizations and peoples who are fighting for a migration and asylum package that does respect human dignity and rights. Thank you. Miguel Jambaski. Legal migration, illegal migration is um, submerging our continent and changing European history, it's changing the nature of European nations and countries. Illegal migration is a genuine danger, and you are responsible for this, ladies and gentlemen. What, have you do what you've done to date has meant that we haven't been able to stop the smugglers and now you're shocked. You're shocked at the consequences of what you have done. And you're scared now because of election results coming in and what you've proposed is complete waste of time. We need to vote against this pact. This pact will lead to an increase in illegal migration in this pact, there are compulsory redistribution quotas set out, which will just make the problem worse. And the problem is still a risk both for you and your peoples. As the King of Belgium said today, we need to look to the stars, stars that accompany those who are migrating. Today, what we see in Palestine, we are actually proposing a pact that would sap the rights of those who are trying to come to Europe, that think it is a safe harbor. Now, we lack solidarity. We need to apply our principles and vote against this pact. Finally, Sean Kelly. I think most people in Europe are sympathetic to the plight of migrants and asylum seekers, and I welcome them, but they expect it to be done in a fair and equitable manner. Up until now, that wasn't possible because we have different systems across Europe. So I welcome in this package. I think it will bring coordination in line with our obligations under international treaties and conventions, and will ensure that there is a cohesive and proper manner in which asylum seekers are assessed. This notion that everybody can come to Europe, legal and illegal, and stay here indefinitely, that upsets people, and that's understandable. They expect it to be done, and now we can do it in solidarity. And I think once we do that, and every member state plays its part, we will help to have a proper structure and also break the power of the people smugglers who have got away with exploiting the most unfortunate people in the world for too long, now I think we can get it done properly and fairly and show that Europe is compassionate and works in solidarity. Thank you very much. So now I give the floor to the Vice President of the Commission, Margarita Skinas. Thank you, Madam Chair, Honourable Members. Four years ago, before presenting our proposals for a new pact for migration and asylum, the situation in Europe was full of images that we didn't like. Lampedusa, Moria, Calais, Canarias. But contrary to those who tried to craft the argument that all this was the result of Europe's making, we were very clear from the start that everything we didn't like about migration was the direct consequence of the lack of Europe. This was the cost of non-Europe. And this is what we are correcting today. The package that we have agreed with member states and with the political groups is a delicate, balanced outcome. I can hear from your passionate contributions in the debate today that not all of you are happy with the result. That's okay. That's a good thing. Because these arguments clearly point out to a balanced outcome that leaves many people in agreement, but leaves other people in the fringes disagreeing. 
This is what European democracy is all about. Actually, the thing we are about, you are about to vote today, is the only thing that we didn't try on migration policy in this political cycle. We did all the rest but having a regulatory framework for migration. We did crisis management, we defended our member states against instrumentalization of migration flows by authoritarian neighbors, we ran from incident to incident, crisis to crisis, ship to ship, we did everything but one, to have a policy. And we are now nearing this moment. This is indeed a make it or break it moment. We are about to open the door to a new house, a packed house, which will be founded on the respect of fundamental rights and the dignity and the values we represent. Not a fortress Europe, but a well-guarded house with more secure external borders and clear rules on who is entitled to enter. A house that will provide shelter to those fleeing prosecution, war and violence. A house where all asylum applications will be processed duly and fairly. A house that will also make sure that those who do not have legal right to be under our protection should be returned to the countries of origin with speed and dignity. And these effective rules, clear, cohesive, holistic rules, will also help us to make EU solidarity the new normal. Honorable members, we are now about to vote. You are about to vote. And this is a major moment for responsibility. This is a unique chance because, frankly, it is not enough for some of you to say that we don't want porous borders and do nothing about it. It is not enough to others to say that we want to protect the sanctity of asylum at all costs but voting down this package. And it is not enough to say that you want to improve the rights of refugees and migrants but stand against the legal texts that are precisely meant to do that. So, this is the moment of truth. Perfection is always the enemy of progress. The pact that you have in front of you is not rebuilding the Parthenon. We never claimed to do so. But we are making a marked, tangible improvement after many years of failures. We today have a non-system for migration in Europe. This might be good for those who want to win votes from the fact that Europe cannot sort out our migration problems. But it is not good for the rest of us. It is not good for citizens. It was not good for Europe. So, a vote against the pact is a vote against the Europe of solutions. I personally felt privileged and honored to be able to accompany this historic process from the day one to today. We are now about to cross the Rubicon on migration and asylum policy. We are proud to show to everybody that the EU can deliver on issues that matter to our people most. Let that be the one single and resounding message voters will need to take when they go to vote next June. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice President. And now we will give the concluding remarks to all the rapporteurs, starting with Birgit Sippel. Two minutes. Madam President, colleagues, I think this debate has demonstrated that the compromise in front of us, of course, is not a simple one. Many contributors 
to the discussion made it very clear why, keeping in mind a very complex challenge that we're facing, why it was so difficult to find a suitable solution. Nonetheless, despite a very distant starting positions, it, we have succeeded after eight years in just a few months to come up with an overall agreement. And I think that really demonstrates the deter determination of many participants and also the willingness uh, to find answers to such a challenge. For that reason, and in spite some of the well-justified criticism, today we have the opportunity finally to f uh, adopt urgently needed solutions for our situation, rules for responsibility, rules for solidarity. And that's why we demonstrate after years of inertia that the EU can achieve progress in migration questions, that throughout Europe, European law is respected, and mer member states have agreed to this with qualified majority vote, and they're going to be able to implement it based on their fundamental rights. And yes, it means that the Commission addresses violations by member states so that the systematic violation of human rights on the external borders aren't just consequently punished, but actually ended. And let me say once again, our efforts to have a migration policy based on solidarity does not end here. In the next legislative period, we need more measures, especially in terms of legal migration. And we also have to ensure the implementation. And we have to monitor the implementation. So ensure that this is a difficult but correct step in the right direction. Thank you. Two minutes. President Metzola, Margaret Eskines, Eva Johansson, ladies and gentlemen, well, here we are. After eight years of hard work, we can act to respond to the migratory flows. We face a decision, an important one, today. Let us be realistic and frank about this. If we're to reject this pact, then we're pushing reform into the future by at least 10 years. If we reject the pact, that means the status quo will be maintained, which is unacceptable, unacceptable for the member states, for the citizens, and for those requesting asylum. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I appeal to all the centre and pro-European parties to support this pact. And finally, to act to allow migration to be controlled and to have genuine solidarity in Europe. Just briefly, I'll recall that thanks to the pact, we're putting a stop to the chaotic situation at the borders of the member states in territories in France, like in Calais. Thanks to the pact, we will also be considerably reducing the number of people in irregular circumstances coming to the EU. Thanks to the pact, uh, asylum procedures will be made more efficient, more harmonised and more respectful for the migrants themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, act or stop. That is our choice today. With my group, Renew Europe, we are convinced to act and we will wholeheartedly embrace this pact on um, immigration and asylum. Thank you. Next, Thomas Tobe. Two minutes. <clears throat> President, uh, Commissioner, I think it is clear for everyone that is uh, watching what is happening on the ground today understands that we need to have a new European migration policy. We have horrific numbers of people dying in the Mediterranean Sea. We still see that the majority of people coming to Europe are irregular migrants. We see that we have a lack of trust between member states. And we also see that we have a lack of trust also for, from citizens towards governments, towards European politicians. Now, finally, we have something on the table. We have something that is truly negotiated and we have an opportunity now 
to find a constructive majority in this House to vote in favour of this migration pact. For years, for years, this House has criticised the Council for not making up their mind, for not being ready to negotiate. Now, finally, we have the Council ready, the Council ready to adopt this and move forward to, towards a true European migration policy. Should it then be this House who rejects it, who, who shows that we're not mature enough to take decisions that would actually mean that we will stick to our European values, but yes, we will have a more controlled migration policy than we have today, but we will also make a choice that we will prioritize the people in need of protection and we will decrease irregular migration. And finally, we will also open up to cooperate more within the Union and together with countries outside of Europe. This is the right path forward. And I do hope, colleagues, please be responsible today. Please vote in favor of the Migration Pact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tobé. Next, Juan Fernando López Aguilla. Two minutes. Gracias, Presidenta. Parliament. Thank you very much. The European Parliament is the only directly elected um, institution and a legislative institution in the world. We are the democratic expression of um, diversity and the complexity of European integration. We come from 27 member states that weren't dissolved because we have an EU and we have elections on the 9th of June. And I'm saying this to remind you that we have a legislative procedure and it's been quite tricky, but of course it was going to be tricky. Uh, and none of the negotiators that have taken part in this can be completely happy and neither am I. I've heard legitimate criticism leveled against this, and I respect it, but I've also heard disinformation and um and information that is not true and arguments that can be refuted in what will be a historic vote. But I would like to say that I truly respect uh, humanitarian organizations that have criticized this. We have the the UN uh, Commissioner for Human Rights, the Commissioner for Refugees, and others that have hailed this pact as an important positive step forward. But to those humanitarian organizations that have criticized, I make your criticism mine, and I have fought for this during every single negotiating session to try and put your views across. But at the same time, I can say that we are members of the European Parliament, and we are not activists here in this House. We have been elected to decide and to legislate and not to engage in incendiary discourse, which is uh, sterile. We are here to take decisions to make things happen. The alternative to not voting on the individual elements of this package is worse. Not only will that mean that the status quo will uh, continue and that every time we have a plenary session we'll be saying that it's shameful, it's disgraceful that the EU is not doing anything about the right to migration and asylum. We have tried and we haven't managed. Uh, it's not about that, but the situation, if we don't go for this, would be even worse. The EU would not, and citizens would feel that the EU uh, cannot act even though it's tried. So after all these years of work, it is worth taking one step forward despite the limitations. There has to be order, there have to be safeguards and common rules where there weren't any. And we're going to vote in favor of every single element of this pact. Thanks. Thank you. Gracias, President. Thank you, President. And thank you particularly to all those who attacked Eurodac. Well, their attacks really just prove that uh, Eurodac is at the heart of the problem. Migration is a big business. Please, could all those sitting on that side please read the Frontex report? The latest report says literally that trafficking uh, groups in Mauritania are constantly uh, putting ever more people on uh, vessels and threatening their lives. So it's the traffickers who are threatening the lives of these people. And it's all those people who are telling them to go to Europe. Because the only people who actually are fleeing from Africa are the persecuted Christians, which you don't seem to care about very much. 
we've seen a 60% drop on the Balkan route, a 70% drop on the um, Hungarian uh, entry route. But if you look at the Mediterranean, Western Mediterranean and the Canaries route, we've seen increases of 50 and 540% uh, um, over the past few months of 2024. Now, everyone except the members of our group voted in favour of, of an amnesty to legalise the status of um, millions of um, irregular migrants. Why? Because we're seeing many of these people on social networks now, in Facebook, Twitter, calling for people to access Europe through the Spanish route. This is just the f fact. We've seen uh, NGOs and associations that are publicly subsidised that are uh, plugging, um, clogging up our inboxes with their messages. But if, what authority do you have to tell us how to vote? We're not here to defend lobbies. We're here to represent voters. Well, we're going to try and build um, a true. Um, edifice of law and order when it comes to this matter. Thank you. Malin Björk, two minutes. Thank you, President. I have heard many arguments uh, today, but the one I've heard most is we have to have a deal. We just have to have a deal. But a deal must be judged on its contents. And I repeat why we in the left will vote against this deal. There is no solution to solidarity. There is no shared responsibility to, uh, to receive asylum seekers. There is no stop to the death in the Mediterranean. Nothing. There will be systematic detention in the borders of Europe. The right to asylum will be dismantled. And there will be more deals with dictators and anti-democratic regimes. Just hear those arguments. So in the left, we stand for fundamental rights. We also stand with all those organizations that are demonstrating now outside this building, but they're also working every day to save lives, to demonstrate what it is with solidarity. Look at them and listen to them, please. And people here like to say that we are anti-European. I would say you are anti-European. We defend a Europe that stands up for fundamental rights. What do you think people want in the future? What do you think the young people of Europe want? They want a Europe that stands for democracy, human rights, solidarity, and fundamental rights. They want workers' rights, that's what they want climate justice. That's the Europe they want to build. And they are not okay with us taking decisions that dismantle that future. And you say we play into the hands of the far right. I would laugh if it wasn't so serious. You are walking in their shoes. You are following in their leash, in their narrative, pinning people against each other, pinning refugees and migrants and refugees against workers, against young people, against families. You must stop. Instead, start to defend people's rights, all people's rights, because that's the future that we have promised to build together for this Europe, a Europe that protects people that don't deny them rights. It starts anywhere. It starts everywhere. It starts today with referee rights. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Björk. Matthias Nemetz, one minute. Thank you, Madam President, um, dear colleagues. Spoštovani in spoštovani, skrena hvala za to razpravo. To zelo nazor... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this debate. This shows the situation of the European Union today and shows the dangers for Europe if today we do not adopt this package. We're all aware that these solutions are not perfect for us. It's a compromise, but there is no alternative to this package. Should we not adopt it today, Europe would be faced with major uncertainty and populists and the extreme right would be given succour. If this is a strategic necessity, adoption of this package, it's a question of responsibility and then we have to get down to implementation. And of course there will be new challenges then and new problems, but we will then tackle them later. There is no alternative this is what is expected of us as Europeans, and therefore I appeal. Please support this package. Sophie Interveld, two minutes. 
Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I stated earlier, I will support the package, but I will do so without joy. Now, every one of us in this room has his or her own reasons for voting in favour or against. And I'd like to say to the EPP, no, Greens and Left are not on the same side of the far right if they vote against. I think that's dishonest. And no, friends of the Greens and Left, those voting in favour, like me, are not on the same side of the far right or anti-European. I have concerns and doubt, and I too struggle with the dilemma. But that is why we are in politics, because having an opinion is easy. Voting for something perfect is not very difficult. But to take responsibility for dilemmas and difficult decisions is our job. And the pact definitely contains problematic elements, risks and weaknesses, and it's dishonest to deny that. But it's equally dishonest to claim that this pact is the end of the right to asylum or that in itself it will lead to more violence at the borders. The violence today is not the result of the existing law, but of national policies and the absence of enforcement. I can defend the new reception conditions directive without any hesitation, and those standards which I had the pleasure to negotiate will apply across the package. And if I had written the pact, it would look very different. But there will not be any fresh proposals on the table or a better negotiation result. It is false to create that impression. And our job does not end here. We have an even bigger task in overseeing implementation and enforcement. And the best guarantee for European values is a solid majority of European Liberal Democrats who stand tall for human rights. So let's make it happen in June. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Intervelt, and that brings us to the end of this joint debate, and the vote will be held later on this afternoon. Thank you.